pregame.com. Welcome back to pregame.tv. We're going to look at elite, act, elite Eight action on Saturday. We're taking a look at Wichita State, Ohio State. Ken, you've got one team, Wichita State. Is there any team that has looked better for three consecutive games? Now, we've had some impressive, you know, outings. Michigan had an impressive outing against Virginia Commonwealth and stuff. But is there anybody that's put three games together like Wichita State in this uh, tournament? No, it's, it's, it's a nice role they've gotten on. And, Marco, when you look back in the Missouri Valley Conference, down the stretch, they had lost three games in a row. They started to right the ship. They had a game against Illinois State in normal Illinois that I don't know if you remember the game, but they I, got a big break down seven. And they actually scored the last eight points in the last 36 seconds. I know because I was on the wrong end of that game. And it's a game you don't forget. I am uh, friends with uh, Coach Greg Marshall. He comes on my radio show all the time. He's a great guy, super guy. He's done a lot since coming over from Winthrop. And uh, that team just finds a way to win. They couldn't figure out Creighton in the Missouri Valley Conference uh, final, the finale first off at Omaha. They lost that to lose the conference outright. And then they lost again in the tournament final. But uh, against everybody else, they've matched up nicely. And Gonzaga, they were in for more than they bargained for. Yeah, uh, the, the Gonzaga game, I'll admit, that one got me. The Pitt game did not surprise me. And I'm a Pitt boy. I'm not happy that Pitt lost that game. But I think Pitt was a little bit distracted. There was a lot of rumors before the tournament started that Jamie Dixon was, you know, going to leave and take the USC job. And then they come out two days after they get eliminated and sign him to an extension. Why don't you sign him before the tournament starts exactly. and, and have that uplift, you know, for the team? Uh, but they took care of them. The Gonzaga game, you know, Gonzaga, you know, didn't shoot well. They didn't help themselves from the foul line. I think they missed like nine free throws in the game. But what killed Gonzaga is Wichita State could not miss from three-point land. Uh, it, that was the difference. They played a LaSalle team last night that – I think the situation, LaSalle was on a nice run. They, they cut some teams off guard. And they're one of those quirky teams that when they switch that lineup and they go to the small guard set, mm -hmm. uh, you know, where they bring the extra guards in and they start, you know, heaving them up from three. A lot of teams were having matchup problems with them and they were drilling those threes. But Wichita State's got a great defense and they had five days to get the X's and O's, go to the chalkboard, and they took that away from LaSalle last night. And I think that was the biggest difference. So I think right now Wichita State definitely uh, they're probably one of the highest teams on value in the public perception eye. But let's look at Ohio State. They skate by two games in a row now. Do you, what do you think about this Ohio State team? Are they for real? Are they good? Are they getting lucky? What's your opinion? Well, here's the thing. They've played two good teams, and they've come down to the wire, and they've made big shots. You had uh, Kraft stepping up in the first game, and then you get the uh, the other three-pointer from Ross last night. So uh, they find ways to win. With Kraft at the point guard, they're always going to be in a game, I think, a big magnitude game, at least this year. I don't think they're going to ever be out of a game. And you like to have that extra coach on the court and an Aaron Kraft is that type of guy but yes they pulled out some games they've gotten a couple controversial calls we all know what happened with Iowa State the possible block which ended up being a charge and wiped away three points possibly for Iowa State at least two for sure and they didn't even count the bucket which they could have actually uh, given them the bucket and Iowa State played that whole second half without Chris Babb one of their starters so yeah maybe uh, Iowa State kind of like Marquette they've dodged or Ohio State they've dodged some bullets but they're there and they're there for a reason they're well coached Ad Mata we know he's an outstanding Outstanding coach, and uh, you know, I think it's going to be a great matchup with Wichita State. You got two outstanding coaches. I think one of the things that was lost in maybe the shuffle last night of the the coaching matchup between Ohio State in Arizona was the closeness between the two coaches. Right. And sometimes, you know, you, you know, it's your your best friend. I know once the game starts, everything, but you know, you know your tendencies of your best friend, and he knows your tendencies. And I think that's what made things a little bit tougher for Ohio State last night. I think. Ohio State moving forward uh, to this game, you know, yes, Wichita State has a great defense, but let's face it, there are some really good defenses in the Big Ten that Ohio State faces on a nightly basis, so I don't think they're going to be as rattled as LaSalle was, but you know what, this is your free pick, let's make it official. 
It is my free pick, and I'm not going to pick a side. Yes, I like Wichita State, and I'll be pulling for Wichita State. My dad was an Ohio State guy, even though he's not with us here anymore. I know he's looking down and saying, you better not go against my Buckeyes. So I won't. I'll go with the total. I'll go with the total over 130. And I know people look and say, well, Wichita State, LaSalle, it hit 130, and uh, we were kind of surprised that it went that high. But if you look at the end of a lot of these games, as you get further on in the tournament, you're going to see fouls. If there's a game that's a five-point spread, a seven-point spread, anything like that at more than one possession down the stretch, you're going to have a lot of points scored with the clock stopped down the stretch. I think that Wichita State is a team that can give Ohio State trouble on the boards and get a lot of second opportunities themselves on the offensive glass, but I expect Ohio State to shoot it pretty well against a zone that kind of packs it down, and when they go man-to-man, -man, they play a little bit loose, and Ohio State, I think Thomas can have a big game. So I think this game will hit about 140, 145, so I think the, the total that they posted initially at 127, which came out of Chris, was a low total, already up to 130, but I still think it goes over substantially. So that's my play. My free play is Wichita State, Ohio State, over the total of 130. Great stuff, Ken, and great point about those fouls at the end of the game. There was a game last night, Miami and Marquette. That game was a stone cold under, and they scored 87 points in the second half to go over, I think, by like five or six points. Ridiculous. Hey, that's it for this one. Takes care of the Elite Eight games. We've got a couple NBA games coming up. We're going to take a look Saturday at Chicago, at Dallas. We'll see what the Bulls can do after they stop the mighty heat. 27-game win streak. That one's up next here, pregame.tv.